record things like so if you miss a day you're not like feeling totally lost um okay so i search for adobe illustrator here it pops up and then it's going to open up sometimes it'll show you some new things that it has to offer the cool thing is in this program if you hover over tools and stuff there's so many tutorials and it just shows you how all these tools work which is really cool um so i'm just going to like close this box if that popped up for you you can see on the home page um there are a lot of different options for sizes now normally what i do is i go up to new so i want to state that if you are if you have a photo like we just took a photo of our sketches you never want to go into illustrator and just open your photo um like you do in photoshop in photoshop you just go to file and open and open it right up but in illustrator if you do that it gets confused because it's not a vector file it's a pixelated file so it gets kind of confused and what happens is all your colors will disappear in illustrator it does weird things so i'm going to show you how to start from the beginning with an illustrator file which is vector it's not based off of re um, resolution it's not based off of pixels um so actually the size that you start with doesn't matter that much but i like to know what size i'm working with so um usually when i start i go to a new document or new file and i go over to print now there's web templates and things like that like sizes that are more applicable to like your phone screen so you can design all sorts of things here film video art and illustration i just go to print sizes because i have a printer and i know what size paper i like to print this on i can visualize it better that way so i'm going to choose just letter which is eight and a half by eleven but if you see here it's it's showing me in points so i always make sure i put it in a size that i can recognize so go to the little measure of the units of measurement here and just choose inches and then i can see okay eight and a half by eleven that's just a normal sheet of paper but remember i can always change the size later because it's vector um that's kind of a good standard size to start with i can always copy and paste my entire design on a huge page later and stretch it out if i want to um, or enlarge it so and then for these we're going to do um three drawings of our animal so you could either do it vertically like this or horizontally like if you want the three up and down one on top of each other fine or horizontally you could do one after another so you would do either this way or this way and you can always change it after you've done it so i don't have to do really a whole lot right here just set the size and if you already accidentally opened a page you can just go up to file you guys and go to create new or new it's like the first or second option if you're already in illustrator you can go to new now i like to right here put my name in like of the file but you can always do that when you save it too for everything you do in this class i want you to name it with your first name first so that way if i download your file from teams i know whose like document it is so let's call this i'm going to call it monica and then i'm going to call it whatever your animal is <laughs> call it bear or i'm going to actually use a pear image today um, i don't have my sketch so i'm going to use monica pear okay so just call it something and then hit create that's all you have to do those of you that were working on installing did it install okay you guys are good yours, yours is good all right yeah so just we're just going to install or open create new sorry not open create new that's under file normally if you're in illustrator already um oh i just went to print and i just showed the letter which is eight and a half by eleven but i just um Yep. No worries. You guys, we get out of here today at 11.48. So let's keep an eye on the time. All right. So remember, if you're if you if you're lost, just raise your hand and I'll come help. Okay. Did everyone get their page open? Okay. So if you notice, like right now, um, you have all sorts of menus and things on your page and um so you have tools on the left you have some like properties on the right now when i learned this program it looked a little different and so i like to set it up the way it originally looked when i learned the program because there's a lot more features that show up if i switch the workspace so 
If you look at your screen, I want everyone to go right next to the maximize, close, minimize button. There's this little menu. So like the fourth little thing from the right, it says switch workspace. Can everyone find that? So you're gonna go down to Essentials Classic. We're on Essentials right now, but Essentials Classic, if you click on that, it shows you like all the tools. It puts a toolbar along the top. It gives you way more tools on the left and just everything, there's so much more visible here. So all my demos that I do, I'm always in this mode. And sometimes this gets a little mixed up and like I can move tabs around and my page gets messy sometimes. So if it, I ever need to clean it up, I can go up to this little square window here and I can go down to reset essentials classic or I can choose a different layout. Like you can try different layouts, but for the most part, I like to use this essentials classic. So if you're on this tab with me, um, we'll be doing, you know, you'll be able to find everything that I'm showing you. So I'm going to reset mine because I pulled my tab over. Does anyone need help finding that? Yes. And you guys, ask your neighbors too if they found it when you flip over. So it's going to go up here. So, guys, once you do this once, now next time you open Illustrator, it'll be set. It'll just be there. Okay? So you don't have to worry about it. All right. So, uh, another thing with this. If I'm ever going over a tool or something and you can't find it, you're just like, I don't see it. Do you see a couple things over from that? There's a little magnifying glass, a search bar. So if I'm like, okay, find the shape builder tool and you can't find it, if you type it in up in the search, you can find it and it'll show you where it's at. So like this little search menu is very helpful. All right. And then the next thing is, um, let's talk about we're, what we're going to do is add our picture to this document, okay? So in Illustrator, what's really nice is you have space around your page to work. You can draw off the side of your page and then drag your drawing over and put it on your page. You can have a photo reference off the side of your page. In Photoshop, it's only like you only have your page. You can't set things around your page. So this is called an artboard. And when I zoom out, I've got so much space around my artboard that I can work. So first off, you can lose your page because it's like all over the place. It'll go haywire sometimes and you'll lose your page. So um, I wanna show you some key commands. There's always like multiple ways to do things in Illustrator, but if you press control minus, so try this as I say them, I'm holding control with my thumb and I'm pressing the minus to zoom out. Control plus will zoom in. But sometimes like you'll look and it'll be like that. It's gray. There's no page there. Control zero will get you to front and center full page. Control plus, control minus. Um, if you use two fingers on your trackpad, it'll move the page up and down and back and forth. You can also hold the space bar down and it turns to this hand and moves your page around. <laughs> so that can be really helpful. So I'm constantly zooming in, zooming out moving my fingers, my two fingers on my trackpad to move the page around. Okay, and then when you first open Illustrator, you're gonna be automatically on the black arrow tool. This is called the selection tool. So that black arrow tool on the left upper tool is gonna move things around when you place, when you have lines and drawings on your page, you move them around, they're separate from your page and you can move things around and squish them and modify them, rotate them with this black arrow tool. So I'm gonna get into that in just a sec. Okay, so key commands, control plus, control minus, control zero, control Z steps back, just like in so many other programs. So these are interchangeable between all the Adobe programs. So if you make a mistake, you can control Z. You can also go up to edit and you can undo, you can redo, you can copy, you can paste. So a lot of these menus are a lot like uh, Microsoft Word and the other programs you use, all right? Okay, so remember I said you can't just open a photo in Illustrator because it's a pixel, it's a roster image, it's made up of pixels. You can, it's just gonna like confuse the program. So instead, what we're gonna do is drop a reference picture onto the side of our page. So I want everyone to go up to file and go down to place. It's about halfway down. It's also control shift P on your keyboard. I use key commands all the time, but I know it's a lot to remember. If you use the program a lot, you'll get used to some of the key commands. 
I actually, you guys have a lot of key commands up on this uh, greeting poster board hanging up here. So some of these, I mean, some of these are for Photoshop, but they still work the same in Illustrator for the most part. So Control Z will undo. Control plus saves. We're going to do that in just a minute. Control plus, control minus, control zero. Those I use constantly. Okay, did everyone find file and place? Everyone good? Okay, so you're going to click that. And then you have to find your drawing that you did that you turned into Teams. If you don't see it anywhere, you can always go over to Teams and you can go in to the assignment and you can go in and download the three dots, just download the drawing from Teams. And then you can grab it, oops, wrong program, from your downloads folder. I'm gonna grab this Buffalo. I know that was someone else's. <laughs> I just found it in my folder. I used my other computer for the last demo. So, <laughs> okay, so do you see how it's just attached to my cursor when I go to file and place? I'm just gonna place this, click anywhere on your page. And it will let it'll release the drawing. Now yours might be huge and completely filling your screen. Don't even worry about it. All right. Yeah, who needs help with that? File in place, and you find your drawings, your little sketches. I would personally put your sketches that you did of your animal up, but you can also put the photo of your animal. Oops, I don't want to distort him. I'm just gonna click and you can. With the black arrow tool, you guys, that's called the selection tool, you can click on the picture and it puts a little box around your picture. You can go from the corner of the box and you can make it smaller and drag it in. In Illustrator, guys, anytime you want to keep things from getting distorted or stretched, if you hold shift, you can click and drag from the corner in and it won't like distort it. So like I'm just going to click and put it off to the side. So make it smaller, hold shift when you make it smaller so it doesn't get distorted. Oh, same thing. Um, did you, I'm worried, did you place this on your page? Okay. Oh wait, no, no, no. We haven't drawn anything. Okay, so you have to place your picture. It's gotta be a picture. So it's gotta be like a photo, like a JPEG or a PNG. I did, I, I had it and that was just like, Okay, find your find a photo of your sketches. If you don't have a sketch. So it's not gonna, yeah, yours was all already drawings. I don't know. I'm not sure where yours went. Oh, <laughs> click on the page. You probably, you probably didn't, you probably oh. didn't, yeah, set it on your page yet. So when you go to final place, you have to like, it's really strange that it's so small, but yeah, it's good. Just kind of have it off to the side. Anyone else need it off to the side? Is everyone okay with that? Um, we are going step by step through Illustrator. Mm -hmm. I'm videotaping it so you can watch it back if you need to. And if you, what time are we in here till? Um, you said 40, yes, 40. It's on the board under second hour. I can't second see. Hour, okay. Um, so we, I'll, I'll run over and help you in just a sec. We also, will you take a picture of your sketches that you did yesterday? Do you have them? Um, take a picture of what you have. Okay. And you're going to turn it into the team's assignment. To get it over to your computer okay i'll have to come and sit with you but um we're gonna keep moving along here um okay sorry jada i'm signing in right now to that mm -hmm. so all you do is just click on the page is it there control minus control plus control zero um so if you need to make something bigger you just click and drag it and just like put it over off to the side just so you can see your drawings. So it's just going to be there as a reference. Yep, you're welcome. You guys try not to get frustrated. If you have a question, don't worry about it. Just come ask me or raise your hand and I'll help you. It can be frustrating at first. 
Okay. So I have the little picture of the buffalo here. You should have your picture of the sketches. Um, and if you want to put your reference picture, the nice thing is you can just put whatever you need to along the side and get rid of it later. I do want to explain one thing though. If you place something on your page, technically it's linked to this file. And this is a little bit more uh, advanced, but some of you will be fine with this. If this is confusing to you, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out later. But um, this picture, if you move your files that you've placed on this page, so the picture of the Buffalo, if it's in my downloads folder and now I move it to like my pictures folder or my documents folder, when I reopen this picture or this file, it's gonna have trouble finding that. It's like linked, it's not actually part of the file. If So to avoid this, all you need to know is when you place a picture in your document, at the top, this little option that says embed will pop up and you have to be clicked on the picture. It has to be selected. See how it's got an X through my picture. If I click embed, it just makes it part of the file so that if I move the pictures for some reason, I don't have to go looking for it and find it because it'll tell you sometimes like you're missing a link from your from your document. And then if it's if you move the file, you have to go find the file. It can be kind of annoying. So this is a little complicated, but don't worry, it's not. It, you'll get the hang of it. So all I did is click embed at the top. You don't have to do that. Does it auto do that if you rasterize it? If, no. Okay. If you vectorize the image, then yes. <laughs> um, okay, so that's just off to the side sitting there and I embedded it. So I don't have to go looking for it later if I for some reason move that Buffalo picture to another folder. Okay, not everything's gonna be this complicated. It's actually pretty easy once you get going. All right, so before we get going though, all I need from you right now is your page with your picture next to it. Let's talk about saving before we get too far so we don't get up to the end of the hour and miss out on this part. So just like in Word or another program, you're gonna go up to File. So I want everyone to save at this moment. File and then Save As. You just save as the first time you're saving this. And, oh, I called it Monica Pear, but I opened up a picture of a buffalo. So, <laughs> buffalo, Monica Buffalo. Okay, so you're gonna save it on your computer, the lower left. And I think it gives you that option again, save on your computer. Now, Creative Cloud has like a cloud you can save things on, but don't because you won't always have the Creative Cloud. You wanna save it to your computer. And then if you have your OneDrive that's showing up, yesterday we linked our OneDrives you can save it to the OneDrive in your graphic design folder. That's why we made the graphic design folder. So you can keep everything in the same spot. So again, I'm gonna change that because I renamed it. Okay. And when you save, do you notice it says file type? Make sure it says Adobe Illustrator. It's a .ai file. Um, that is just a file that's specific to this program. It's going to allow you to go in and like move or change anything. Um, when you're done working on this document, when we finish our drawings, then you save it as an Illustrator file again, and then you can save it as another document, like a JPEG or a PNG that you could put on your website or share with someone. But an Adobe Illustrator file is a working file. You can go in and like modify things and edit things as needed or continue working on it. So if you're working on something, you always want to save an Adobe Illustrator version of it. Okay, so you just click save. It should automatically choose that for you. And then another screen will pop up, just hit okay. Does anyone need help with that? Just file, save as, just like you do for um, Microsoft. Um, Microsoft I have her name in it. Actually, I'm sure I just saved that. So, this and then the other day, it just is your downloads. I actually want to make sure I put it in your point five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, in front of that. And then, Okay, so you didn't embed your link, so just, just click embed. Oh, that's what we did for you. Yeah. So if you don't embed your link, it's just going to give you a warning, like, oh, that file, if you move it, it's going to unlink from your picture. 
Okay. All right. So, anyone else unable to save? All right. So, if you run into any glitches, just let me know. Okay. So, moving on, what we're going to do is we are going to learn some of the shape tools and we are going to start building one of our designs with just using simple shapes, just like we practice doing in our drawings. So, you can actually, if you want to, draw right over top of your picture and then take all your shapes and just move them onto the page when you're done. That's kind of the beauty of digital art. Um, or you could just draw right next to it on the page next to it, whatever you want to do. So remember control plus, I do this a lot and then use my two fingers to move over. <laughs> um, so I'm going to zoom in. Yes, we haven't gotten there yet, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Yes. Um, so and then we can, yeah, like lock different layers and kind of um, make things so you're not grabbing the wrong thing accidentally. So we'll go over that. OK. Is everyone good? You got a picture up. So feel free to, to trace and draw right over top of your picture if you want to. So if you have a circle or something in the background, ignore the circle. Focus on let's to focus on building our character or our animal first. So just like we did with our sketches, we're going to divide up this animal into shapes. So um, let me tell you a few things about the shape tool. It's one, two, three, four, five tools down. There's a rectangle, but if you hold that tool down with your mouse, look at all the other shapes within it. So there's tools within tools, which can make it difficult to find tools. So can I have everyone go to the rectangle, hold it down, Go to the ellipse tool because everyone probably has a circle somewhere in their design. So choose the ellipse tool. It's L on your keyboard. As you're working, like the little key commands are listed within the tools. So the rectangle tool is on top. You hold that down and go down to the ellipse tool. But if you just press L on your keyboard, it also does that, which is kind of cool. So nothing happened. With any tool, if you click and drag, it's going to drag out the shape. Pretty easy. If you want a perfect circle, you can hold shift as you drag out the shape. OK, so perfect. Circles, you hold shift. You have to hold shift until you let go of it. Otherwise, it might snap at the end and like make it an oval. So hold down shift if you want to make a perfect circle. Now I can go to the arrow tool at the top, that black arrow and delete it. Click on it and delete it if I don't like it. Um, or just press the backspace button. So I'm going to divide up this buffalo with a couple shapes. So after I draw the circle, if I hold shift, it remains in um, proportion. If I want to move the circle, I have to go back to the arrow tool at the top, this black arrow tool, and I can move it around. Okay. With the black arrow tool, it's called the selection tool. If you hover over it, it's actually V on your keyboard. I like to just press V so I can get back to my arrow tool really quickly. I can go back to it though. It puts a bounding box around it so I can like make it bigger or smaller if I didn't make it the exact size. If I hold shift, I can like keep it in proportion when I make it bigger or smaller. So see, I can kind of make it the exact size I need it. With this selection tool as well, that black arrow tool, if I hover off the corner of the bounding box, so see there's a little box around it, you'll get a curved arrow. And you can rotate things with this. It doesn't matter so much, but um, you can rotate shapes as well. If I need an oval, look at I can just squish it and make it an oval. Control Z if you mess something up and you want to step back. Did everyone find the tool? Does raise your hand if you can't find that shape tool. Okay. All right. I also want to point out with any tool in here. Do you see along the top you have a fill? and you have a stroke. The stroke is the outline. So um, Jada, we just found the shape tool, fifth tool down, and we held shift to drag out a, an ellipse, a perfect circle somewhere on our page to, to draw the animal. So um, I'm gonna make the fill on this nothing so I can see my picture through the circle. So do you guys see at the top you have a fill? You have the same thing along the right side in the properties panel. It says fill under appearance. You can also change up the fill here um, on the toolbar. So I usually go to the top and just go to no fill. And then the stroke or the outline, we call it the stroke in Illustrator, is here. I'm going to make it like a color that I can see really clearly, like yellow. <laughs> It'll stand out. 
So see how I can change the stroke and the fill to different colors. And then next at the top, you can change the thickness of the stroke. I just click the up arrow or the down arrow where it says one point and see how you can change the thickness. So can you pull the place a picture off to the side? File place. And then um, you know. Okay. Did you guys see the stroke and the fill? So we can always change all these colors later, but sometimes I just like to choose the color that stands out. So there's stroke there. Now up at the top, there's a uniformity. So eventually when we do our line drawing version of this, you can change like the lines and make them go from thick to thin. You can choose different types of line where it says basic. You can do like sketchy lines and all sorts of things like that. Opacity means it's the, um, the transparency of the line, like you can turn it way down. So it's kind of see through. All of these options are at the top if you're on that essentials classic mode up here, or they're along the side here. You can, there's like multiple ways to change things. Okay, so you've got those two. Let's do a couple circles. And I could take my arrow tool, you guys, and I could copy and paste this circle if I wanted to. Um, Control C on your keyboard copies. Control V pastes. So you have to, in order to copy and paste something, you have to like um, click on it with the arrow tool first. But see, I'm just lining up different shapes. I could just redraw it each time too. I'm trying to find, I'm gonna hold shift and these might not all be perfect circles. No, that's not. I'm gonna overlap these shapes, oops, to try to draw the bison's body. So we're gonna start with basic shapes and then I'm gonna to go to the arrow tool. So I'm going back and forth from the arrow tool to the shape tool. And I'm just making different adjustments. Now to click and move a shape, you have to make sure you're clicking on the outline. If you turned off the fill, click on that path. Don't click in the middle. It'll move the picture behind it. So we'll talk about how to freeze that up and sometimes it's hard to grab the right thing right okay we are i'm going to go over a couple more things so you don't have to finish anything right now just look at the shapes that are there okay let's talk about a couple other shapes because you might not have a lot of circles for me i have something that's kind of triangular here as well so there are rectangles that's easy enough there's rounded rectangles and then if you want a triangle, you're going to go hold the shape tool down and go down to polygonal tool, the polygon tool, or the star tool. So with either of those, as you click and drag, you guys, this is really important. So watch up here. I grab the polygon tool. If I let off the polygon tool, it's too late. I'm going to undo. I'm going to click and drag. As I open up the shape and I'm dragging, and my, mouth, my hand is still on the mouse, if I press the down arrow, it changes the number of sides on the tool. Um, I can press the up arrow and it adds size. So that works for both the star and the polygon. So you could do a triangle out of the star or the polygon, but if you let off of the tool, it's too late. If you let off the tool, there is, if you zoom in, you go to the arrow tool, uh, and sometimes it's hard to find. There is a little line that you can adjust. Where are, where are you? There is a little, it's not the path line. Okay, wait, maybe it's over here. See, it's already gone. I, I just discovered this, and but it doesn't seem very consistent. Like sometimes I see it there. Okay, wait, sometimes I don't. Yeah, I don't see it. There's like a little line on there sometimes that will allow you to adjust the sides. This isn't letting me. So as you drag it out, as you choose that shape tool, let's try that. So choose the star of the polygon, guys. Drag it, and as you drag it, before you let off, press the down arrow on your keyboard or the up arrow. Try to make a triangle. Down, then let off. Then you can take your rec your uh, selection tool and you can move the points. You could squish it. Like you can click on the path. You could like squish it if you want a narrower triangle. And you can rotate it. Do you guys see how to rotate? Now, some of these, we might need to do a bit more than that. Is 
Did everyone figure out that triangle? How to get a triangle? Just have a triangle shape over that. We're going to do just sharp shapes for now, and I'll show you how to round them out in just a minute and modify them. So we're starting with basic shapes, then we'll modify them from there. Sorry, what's going on with yours? Are you doing okay? Okay. We, how many minutes do we have left? I think we still have six minutes. See how many times I did. Check that clock. Yeah. Okay, so as you drag it, don't let go yet. You have to do it as drag. I didn't have it let go. It must have been down here. So look, as I drag, I'm up here now. Right? I just started moving. It's a little tricky to get. Okay, pretty soon. You are usually long ones. I need to see that one or that. Yeah, and so as you drag it out, press it down with arrow. It has to be as dragged. I already beat it. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So that arrow tool will allow you to move shapes, rotate shapes, squish shapes, um, basically transform the shapes. But what if you need to like make your triangle rounded or what if you need to like make it shorter? The other arrow tool, you guys, this is the direct selection tool. So if you go to the white arrow tool, which is A on your keyboard, watch what it does. There's a little thing. Okay, so I can double click. If I go on my white arrow tool, I can double click on the anchor points, see the little points, and I can drag it in. I can, there's little circle like bullseye that appears inside corners of your shapes. If you click and drag those, it will round things. So you have your black arrow tool, which is your selection tool, that will just make shapes bigger, smaller, rotated. But then you go to your white arrow tool and you can click on points and double click on them and move them around. You can also go to the little, um, these little white like bullseye that are in the corners and you can click and pull them and they will round out corners as needed. So did you guys see that? So try just click on any shape with the white arrow tool. It's called the direct selection tool. And you can see the little, see the little preview there. And we'll get into, see, the little preview has these little, anytime you have a curve, you get these little handles, you have to pull out and adjust the curve. We'll get to some of that. So like on the, the circles, there's these little handles. When you click these little things that stick out, it'll allow you to oops, adjust the curves. And we're going to talk about how to like break apart the shapes and things like that too. So if I click on an anchor point here, I can like adjust the shape and I keep accidentally clicking on this poor little buffalo picture and moving it so I got to show you how to lock that in place too we're going to do that next class so so far we've got the shape tool we've learned how to open and close the document do some of the key commands and how to move things rotate things shift the size of things and now we can round out shapes um round or, or um move the points of shapes we're just roughly going to build out the shape of that creature. So we only have three minutes left. So what I want everyone to do, we've already saved as, so just press control S and save. And I would highly recommend saving every few minutes as you work, just press control S, just so if the computer crashes, you don't lose your, what you've just done. So save it, then you can just close your computer and it should, when you come back to it tomorrow and log in, it should just be there waiting for you. Just make sure you save it first, control S. Okay. So we will pick up tomorrow.